Hi all, it's Teresa in Gemma's house. Well, I just finished resizing another queen size quilt to be bigger so it fits better on my new bigger mattress. <laughs> so I had done a similar video a couple weeks ago where I used a different method for adding an extension border all the way around the quilt. So this method in this video is different. And I liked both methods, and it depends on the design of the quilt that I'm resizing, which method I will use. I still have a lot more quilts to resize to be bigger for this bigger mattress. And if you want to see my previous video, I'll link it to the end of this video. And there's quilt math in that video to help you estimate how much fabric you'll need to do these extension borders to resize your quilts. So let me show you how I did this one. Okay, so this is the next quilt I'm going to add borders all the way around to increase the width and length. And this one, it's about four inches to the bottom of the mattress. I love this quilt. It was from a jelly roll that I bought on sale and I love the variety of prints that was in that jelly roll. And then I added yardage and some remnant fabrics for the borders around each nine patch. So I bought a two yard piece of this fabric for the border and I think it's the same fabric as this. The speckles look a little brighter on here, but maybe it's because this quilt has been washed a few times already and those gold speckles just faded. But I want to keep this binding showing so that it's a nice color break between the new border and the rest of the quilt. I think that will make a really nice border. So the back of that quilt is muslin, and I have these two different kinds of muslin, but they're similar enough. Most of them are like this, and I cut them into seven inch strips, and then I'll cut this new fabric for the front of the border into seven inch strips. So since I want the binding to show, I'm going to have to sew the border underneath the binding and I'll top stitch over it. So I'm sewing the front part of the border to the back part of the border, right sides together. I'll sew it here and then turn it and iron it flat. So now it's time to add the batting in between the two pieces of the border. And I had cut the fabric for the border to be seven inches wide. But for the batting, I don't want the batting to overlap this seam on this side, and I don't want the batting to go all the way to the unfinished end either, because I'll be sewing this border on to the quilt, and I don't want this area to be too thick. So I'm just going to cut the batting to be about six inches wide. I think that will be good. Okay, so just like I did on my previous quilts that I resized, I'm using a lot of these cotton batting remnants that I have, and I'm just piecing them together so that I can fit it in between those two pieces for the border, because I want the weight to be the same for the border as for the original quilt. On my machine, I just put the pieces of batting side by side and do a wide zigzag stitch on them. Now I'm ready to fit this batting in between the two pieces of the border. Once I have this batting fitted in between the two pieces of the border, I'm just going to do straight line quilting about every five inches all the way along the length of this border. First, I'll pin it with my curved quilting pins to keep it together while I do the quilting lines. 
So I think it's easier to do the quilting on the border first before I sew the border onto the quilt because it's much easier to maneuver this border around. Much smaller piece. I'm going to use a black thread on the top and an off-white thread in the bobbin so that they match both sides of the border. And here's the other side of my border after I did the quilting lines and I wanted to keep these quilting lines simple on this border. You could also do any other kind of quilting on here if you like but I have so many other quilts that I want to resize larger so I'm keeping my borders simple. And just if you're curious, I use this saddle stool that is so comfortable to sit on when I'm sewing. And it's adjustable height because I find that I have to sit up a little higher when I'm winding bobbins than when I'm sewing. So the adjustable height is really nice too. And I always put a rug underneath this stool because I have tiled floors here in my dining area. And I don't want the stool to go flying out from under me when I'm going to sit down on it or get up. And also, my younger daughter bought me these hand weights a while ago, and they really come in handy for when I'm trying to keep the quilt on the table, pinning other parts to it and things like that. I think she intended for me to use them for a different purpose. <laughs> okay, so with the wrong side of the border, which is the muslin side, facing the wrong side of the quilt, which is also the muslin side, I'm going to pin the unfinished edge of the border right alongside the edge of the quilt. I'm going to pin it about an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the quilt, just to give myself a little bit of room when I turn this because I'm going to be top stitching on top of the quilt's existing binding. And because I didn't put the batting all the way to the edge of the inside of the border pieces, it's not too thick here for where I have to sew it onto the quilt. I'm going to sew it from the front so I can sew right along this inside edge of the binding. I'm using a blue thread on the top and I'm going to start sewing about an inch in from the edge. And also since I'm going to be sewing through many layers of fabric and one layer of cotton batting, I'm going to be using a number 16 needle on my sewing machine. Okay, so now when I turn this, I can press this down and I'm going to top stitch along the outside edge of this binding to keep everything in place. So I have a blue thread in the top thread and an off-white thread in the bobbin as I top stitch along this outer edge of the binding. And I'm going to start sewing about an inch in from the edge. It's just slow going because I want to get right along the side of that binding. About an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the binding. So far it's going well. And look how nice this turned out, if I don't say so myself. And look at the border has a finished edge. I don't have to put a binding on here. 
and the other side of the quilt also has a nice finished look. So for these corners, as I'm sewing on the border to the quilt and top stitching it, I'm not sewing all the way to the edge. I'm only sewing to about an inch from the edge. I'll show you that in a following step as I finish these corners. Okay, so here I am at the first corner. And this is the piece that extended past the edge of the quilt from this side of the border. So, since I need to sew this side of the border onto the edge of the quilt, and then on the other side, when I turn it, I'll be top stitching along the edge of the existing binding on the quilt. And this is a finished edge, so I need this side of the border to be a finished edge as well. So I can do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'll just cut this part of the border off about an inch higher than the edge and I'll turn the border edges to the inside making it a finished edge just like the finished edge of the quilt basically. So that's the reason why I didn't sew the border and top stitch it to the very edge of the quilt just to give myself some room here to work. And now I have a finished edge on this side of the border just like I have a finished edge on this side of the quilt. And now I'll just pin this side of the border right to it just like I pin the border to the edge of the quilt. Okay, so I changed to the black top thread and now I'm going to sew the corners of these two borders together. The same distance away as where I'm sewing the border onto the edge of the quilt. here are the finished corners front and back for a couple of the corners because I was overlapping a finished edge of one of the border sides onto the other border side uh, a little bit of the muslin showed on the side here and I just couldn't tuck it under enough so I tried to camouflage it a little bit by going back and forth over it with black thread. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to live with this. It's fine with me. Okay, so it's finished and I'm very happy with it. It's now one of my biggest quilts I have. It ended up being 94 by 84 inches after I washed and dried it. And I just love the colors. I think the border color works really well with the rest of the quilt. And it goes down past the bottom of my new bigger mattress. And I thought this method of resizing the quilt larger was pretty good. It did take some time, that's for sure, but I will use it again. And my next quilt that I will resize is this quilt that was one of the first quilts I made with my new Baby Lock Jazz 2 sewing machine. And because I would want to keep the existing binding on this quilt showing, I'll use the same method that I did in this video. So I was able to find this beautiful piece of fabric on sale, of course, clearance. <laughs> and I got two yards of it and I will have enough to add borders all the way around on this quilt as well. 
So I think this will look really nice as a border for this quilt. So I hope these videos give you some good ideas to use in your own home. And if you look on my Gemma's House main page, you'll see I have a lot of other videos doing a lot of other types of projects and crafts. So you might see something else that you're interested in watching also. And if I can ask you to please give this a thumbs up if you liked it, and please subscribe. So thanks a lot for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye.